Madame Ret Mrs. Retno Masudi, who is the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Indonesia. Jean-Yves, Joseph, Ministers, Excellencies, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. Just a few days ago, at the G20 Finance Ministers and Central Bank Governors meeting in Jakarta, the President of Indonesia said that, I quote, it is not the time to start a rivalry and new tension which disrupt global recovery. Instead, we all must focus on creating synergy and collaboration immediately. This is the spirit of Indonesia G20 Presidency. We want to be a catalyst of global recovery through strategic, collaborative, and concrete measures that brings concrete results to the benefit of our people. Our hope is that the same can be emulated at the Indo-Pacific region. Colleagues, the ASEAN foreign ministers had a retreat meeting in Phnom Penh last week. We discussed, among others, ways to strengthen concrete cooperation to implement four priorities of the ASEAN outlook on the Indo-Pacific. Indonesia is fully aware of the growing significance of Indo-Pacific to the world economy. However, we thought peace and stability, and we thought respecting international law, we could lose all its potential. For Indonesia, the Indo-Pacific is a sea of opportunities, and it is too large for any single country to dominate. Therefore, common security, common stability, common prosperity in the Indo-Pacific region must be a public good. This can only be achieved through strategic collaboration. Now, let me share with you some thought to reach this objective. First, developing a positive paradigm. Colleagues, competition in the Indo-Pacific is inevitable and even welcome. However, we must avoid such competition from becoming an open conflict. We must respect international law. Peace, stability, and predictability must remain centerpiece in our region. This is exactly the soul of the ASEAN outlook on the Indo-Pacific, and this is also exactly the soul of the Indonesia Presidency in the G20, where we seek to change the logic of interaction among countries from zero-sum game into win-win cooperation, rivalries into dialogue and cooperation, trust deficit into strategic trust. This shift of paradigm can make a big impact to the future of Indo-Pacific and the world. My second point, promoting synergy among Indo-Pacific initiatives. Colleagues, each of us here have different ways of looking at the Indo-Pacific, but this is also evidence of a converging interest among countries in promoting stability and addressing the challenges faced by the region. For this reason, there's even more urgency to synergize the various initiatives. Apart from the securities issues, concrete cooperation must also be pursued on maritime domain, sustainability and green transition, trade and investment, and connectivities as well as SDGs. And this will deepen our partnership, build confidence, and in turn, reduce security risk. To conclude, we all come here to expand our cooperation to make the Indo-Pacific an arc of peace, not an arc of animosity. So let us synergize our initiative for the people of the Indo-Pacific. I thank you very much.